So within a few turns of this campaign, we're already seeing tension spots rise up within this map. One very easy one to look at is East Asia. We have Mongolia, China, and Korea all bordering next to each other. Even Japan could possibly play a role within this huge war. These Asian civs are going to go after it, and it's going to be really exciting to watch. And it looks like Mongolia is going to have the advantage here because they're going to get their third city down very fast. They also have a caravan up, which is something that, well, I guess it's some of the, some of the civs, some of the other civs. We, I, I see, obviously, Korea has their own caravan. Uh, Japan does not, though. And they're, I, I assume that they're, oh, they haven't, I don't think they have assigned this. This Mongolian caravan has not been assigned just yet. So it looks like Mongolia might take the lead here. We can't forget about the amazing archers that uh, China does have, which should keep her pretty safe. Uh, those archers, I believe, can attack twice, so that should kind of keep her safe, and she already, you know, she has one, so she'd have to upgrade that. Now, Korea, on the other hand, mm, we'll see. I, it's, I don't, I, I think that if anyone's going to have more of a chance to survive an attack from Mongolia, it would have to be China. Korea doesn't really have much going for them in terms of defense, because not only do they have to worry about Mongolia, they still have to worry about China, and they still have to worry about Japan. I know that we talked about Korea maybe winning this game, but they're gonna have a tough time. If they if they if they if they do survive this region, well then damn it, they deserve it. They deserve the win because uh, it's gonna be tough, and they either need to well, there's really nothing they can do. They they can they can't really just you know ditch their capital and then uh, go up north to in the Siberian lands and then towards Africa or As uh, I'm sorry Alaska. I don't know. Also, can Japan? Japan can also. Oh yeah, they can. If they send a, a scout up and then they cross over, they could technically go to uh, what the the west coast of North of Northern America. But we'll see. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next turn. I witnessed over the break that uh, Carthage actually settled the other spot inside of the Arabian Peninsula. I'm sorry, not Carthage, Byzantium. So good for Byzantium. Good for Byzantium. Good for, good for them, getting out there. I think we're going to start to see that more and more. That's going to be a very, very common thing. Uh, we're going to see a lot of that sort of thing happen, which is only going to cause some very strange wars to happen. Some strange wars like the Celts going to war with uh, the Zulu or Ethiopia because maybe the Celts have decided to come and, and just, uh, I don't know, expand into the Sahara Desert. Obviously, these African civs are not going to like that, as they shouldn't. As they shouldn't. Uh, it's so it's gonna be so fun watching as Europe kind of plays from behind and to see who is going to control this region. Uh, Poland still could be a powerhouse. Now the one civ that I really wanted to talk about, really really bad, are the Huns. I really think that the Huns are going to be a very big game changer, an extremely big game. I'm not saying that they. I guess I should rephrase that. They have the possibility of being a huge game changer in this uh, because they can, if they if they want to, because well, technically Catherine doesn't have her second city yet. She will. She's close though. She is close. Uh, if if he wants to, he can take out Catherine. If he wants to, he could probably block off Poland or take out take over Poland. Uh, he also can maybe go down south here, deal with Persia, deal with. Uh, uh, Babylon, I mean, the Huns are powerful very fast, and because the Huns, I mean, they're, this is deity, the Huns are going to be extremely, extremely aggressive. As soon as they get up their two unique units, I would be afraid. I don't know if it's going to be the Ottomans, more than likely it's going to be Catherine, though. So, you know, he could take out Russia very fast here, and he won't stop there. The Huns are a very, very good AI when, when playing at deity level. They already have quite a few warriors. Yeah, quite a bit of warriors, so they have a possibility of really shaking up this game. And I think maybe completely walling off um, Europe from the rest of Asia. Okay, so we got next Pathion, Russia. Oh, wow, okay. And they chose to go with a goddess of festivals, which is going to offer them one culture and one faith for wine and incense. Uh, do you have much of that stuff? Not really. Uh, yeah, no, you don't really. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll let that go. Who's going to get the only iron, or one of the only iron resources? Poor, poor Venice. Venice is screwed. Venice is really screwed. Never realized, I never realized how screwed Venice is, because unless they, until they get the, actually, they will never, they, they're, they're done. And you know, maybe Amsterdam as well. Uh, Netherlands, I mean. Uh, the, the Amsterdam will never become a thing. Assyria, certainly not. Well, actually, Assyria might be screwed too, because they won't get these technologies. They, unless, of course, 
I think they can still they can still talk to the AI. If the AI is going to give them open borders, which eventually they will, but the the technology might be pretty far away from them. Ah oh, man, rest in peace already, Assyria. Oh, Golden Age. Yeah, not really. Uh, if you haven't if you hadn't noticed, I am playing as uh, America is the is the observer sieve that I'm playing with. Okay, I gotta slow down because there's just so much going on with this map. I cannot go by too fast, even though I'm gonna be kind of next turn happy. Uh, because there's just way too much stuff to look at. So how is how are the Zulu doing? They have their third settler up. Good. Looks like they're about to find their their third city. Ethiopia is doing uh, okay as well. Uh, they're okay. How about Egypt? Egypt doesn't have. I don't see a settler from Egypt or Arabia. Arabia is probably going to kick out uh, Byzantium from from the uh, Arabian Peninsula, but we'll see. I, I think that Morocco, I think Morocco, Carthage, and Songhai will all be extremely expansive. The Celts now have their next Pathion up. Who is going to be the first with their religion? I think the religion game was a very underestimated, it was very underestimated in terms of the AI-only Europe game that I did uh, in, the, in the previous campaign. Poland got up the, by far, the number one religion, and it wasn't ne technically because they had the most faith generating per turn, or they didn't get the first religion, I don't think, in the game. It was just because... They were in such a dense area. So whichever sieve is close enough to Europe, they could have easily the most powerful religion in the game. Uh, people who like to smile the most, doesn't really matter, but who is unhappy? Siam is most unhappy. Why is that? Do you have not have much? You must not have much luxury resources over there. You must not. Let's see. Uh, you, uh, you have gems. You just didn't settle on it. You have gems and spices. You just didn't settle your second city with more luxuries. Okay. But that's okay. Now, how is Indonesia doing? Okay. Indonesia is on a different island. They're exploring, so good. They haven't set out their, their settler yet, but they're going to be getting pretty happy very fast here, especially if they find Australia. And, of course, New Zealand as well. New Zealand will be a good one to get as, as well. Okay, now how's this tension area? There it goes. Mongolia didn't go for the horses. Strange choice there. Oh, we also have India uh, grabbing this desert up here, going up north and, and grabbing this uh, this de desert location. Could essentially, oh, St. Petersburg has also been settled, so it should keep Catherine alive, at least before uh, the Huns maybe declare war. Persia is looking like they're going to get their third city up. India, this might eventually draw India into some sort of border tension with Mongolia at some point. Um, definitely, as, as things continue to progress throughout this world, we could see some tension going on here. But I think Mongolia's sights are really kind of set over in this direction. Uh, China's also going to get up her th uh, third city. We have all the third, this is the video of the third uh, cities. The, the video of the, so a lot of, I mean, I wouldn't really call this colonization, and we're not going for the conquer just yet. I think we're going to see the conquer part of it again in Europe pretty soon. Within the few, first few videos, I think we're going to start to see wars start to break out just because they've got no other option. And, and once the first war breaks out, as you see, it's going to be this domino effect, just a complete domino effect. I think in, in Europe, you have to count Austria and France as some of the most, among the most powerful, just because they were lucky enough to get up their cities. So you got to count them, uh, at least among the most powerful. We have Ramses entering the classical era, uh, Gandhi, and Songhai as well. All right, Korea also has another Pathion up. We will see the uh, Korea and Japan possibly battle it out to see how many, how, many, how many religions can be founded. I don't even know because we're way over the limit to civs in this game. Another Pathion, Babylon. And a religion has been founded. All right, who is the first? Ethiopia. All right, Eastern Orthodox from Ethiopia. There's a lot of opportunities out here for him, especially because like not even not no Pathion, not even a Pathion has been founded in the entire African continent. Holy crap! Okay, so how many religions can be founded? First of all, let's check. Uh, oh wow. Okay, so there still can be six founded. Uh, still wait, religions that can be founded six. So there's only five left to go. So these are going to be really dominant religions in a map with 35 civilizations. These six civs that get up their religion are going to be good, especially if they go for the, for the good shit. And we should actually check on the beliefs exactly with uh, what they decided to go for, because that's the first key factor here. I know, I've already begun my, my key factor phrases, but you guys got to realize that it's going to be key. I promise you, it's going to be key. These six religions in this world are going to have so much cities. So many cities to convert and a lot of opportunities here. Uh, you gotta, you got to start to you know, consider 
the civs that get up religion first. So let's let's see exactly what beliefs they decided to go for. Um, okay, so Eastern Orthodox right now currently has science when a missionary or prophet spreads. Wow, that is a big one. That's going to be a very big one. Ethiopia, because also they're going to play tall. Ethiopia, kind of a uh, kind of interesting choice here. Ethiopia could be a kind of interesting choice in winning this game. We also have uh, faith. Okay, so yeah, this is that's a pretty good building. You can use your faith to uh, get up extra faith, culture, and I, I think it's happiness. Yeah, I believe it's happiness. So pretty good beliefs there. All right, Haran al-Rashid has built the Temple of Artemis. Going to give him a little bit of extra food. Actually, a lot of extra food, which is going to be much needed because he is in the desert. Um, he is located in kind of the kind of the middle middle of the desert. I cannot wait to see who's going to get up the uh, the the Petra. There's a lot of civs that could really use the Petra right now, and I think I think one obviously you know if Egypt gets the Petra that would be huge. But there are quite a few other civs that could get the Petra as well. You know, I'm not even sad about Assyria. Assyria had the opportunity of going and settle some someplace, but they didn't do it. They they did not do it. Okay, so Siam has got up their own Pathion. These Pathions really don't matter. Uh, it just kind of predicts who might be the next Civ to get up the next religion. I think you got to count on the Celts. you got to count on a few of these other ones. Maybe Japan, because Japan was pretty fast and get up their Pathion as well. Indonesia. I know you don't have this. I don't. I know you don't have the technology, but you guys got to start embarking. You got to start doing the colonization part of it. Persia, I think, is gonna be extremely expansive. Just at normal. Normally, per Persia is extremely expansive. I think we could see a very powerful Persia who really, really could complicate things for India. If anything, the only sieve that's gonna be pretty chill, I think, is, is gonna be Indonesia. Indonesia, I know I keep going back to them, but they could go completely unchecked in this game, really. I mean, who's really going to check Indonesia? Not anybody. Japan is going to be kind of in a tough spot, only because they kind of have to go and colonize other, spa uh, other spots here, either in Northern Asia or Southern Asia. I mean, they don't really have a lot of options. So, but, but in, in Indonesia, if they discover... If they discover all this land, and if they play their cards right, they could be uh, really, really powerful. But I, I, I don't have a lot of faith in them. I really don't have a lot of faith in them. We, we, it could be possible. Wow, Carthage, four cities. Wow, ballsy. Good move for you. Very good move for you. And uh, of course, you know, a lot of these Asian or a lot of these European civs won't be do won't be doing uh, their second city for a while now. Not until. They get the embarking for their units, the uh, whatever that lighthouse one is, the, whatever that technology is. Um, uh oh, Morocco's completed the Great Library. Uh, oh, hold on, optics. That's what I'm trying to think of. Optics here. Boom. There it is. Yes. Uh, so a lot of civs have already entered the classical era. So more than likely, um, some civs have probably already have this technology. But when we start to see European civs start start to cross over into the classical era, we can assume that they might be slapping down their maybe their second city. This is going to slow them down, but not necessarily. Here's the thing: these cities here, because it's on deity, they're going to be hugely populated. You just watch. Extremely dense in population. Uh, we saw it here with the Netherlands in the previous game where they only had like one or two cities, but they had so much population. And we could definitely see that. Uh, London's already at eight. Madrid's not doing too well, but there's a lot of mountains in Iberia, so that's the problem. Wow. Wow. Portugal was at three citizens. It's going to be so fun watching Europe just kind of get, just kind of crumble here. I mean, I, I, I like, oh, wait, who's the next one? Yep, it is. Japan has chosen Shintoism. And again, let's check your. Let's check your beliefs that you've ch chosen to go down. All right, religion overview. Shintoism so far has, let's see, they found a belief to faith for each foreign city following this religion. Boom, that's a lot of faith, which means ultimately, and they also went for cathedrals, which means a lot of cathedrals. I believe that's one faith, one culture, and is it one happiness? I'm not 100%. I am not, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, that's... That's pretty good. They're going to be getting a lot of faith, but a lot of faith production or a lot of faith per turn doesn't necessarily mean powerful religion. The AI doesn't necessarily tend to use uh, that faith to the best of their abilities. So yeah, uh, you know, Kyoto might be spreading a lot of, of Shintoism throughout Eastern, Eastern Asia, but if they have a lot of faith, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be spreading their religion. There's also not going to be, boom, Mongolia has their fourth city. Oh shit, I would be terrified of Mongolia. 
Especially because Korea only has their second city up. I can I oh no they're they're about to colonize though they're about to go get something up this way. Russia is kind of discovering all throughout this uh, all throughout northern Asia. We have Persia discovering shit, Korea discovering shit. Um, Persia also about to settle their third city. The Huns, how are you doing? Oh, you are starting to block off. You're starting to block off Moscow already, and also all of Europe also. Poland's at three cities, and I'm wondering how much more Scandinavia is going to move in towards modern-day Russian lands. Could be. Oh, the first declaration of friendship between Morocco and Carthage. Okay, that's an interesting choice there. Especially because you guys border each other. I'm wondering if that's because Morocco is a little bit afraid of you. Oh my gosh, Carthage is, it has, it has a fifth settler. Are we going to see massive aggression... A lot, a lot of expansion uh, from Carthage here. Dido tends to be extremely expansive. We could see it. On the other hand, uh, the Ottomans not doing so good in terms of expansion. They are, they are kind of screwed here. Uh, and Assyria is just trying to... They, they know where they need to go. But they just can't make it per, uh, past one tile. They just can't make it past that one tile there. Uh, let's see here. Napoleon has entered the classical era. All right, good for Napoleon, I guess. I mean, Napoleon could be powerful. They already have their road up. They do already have their road up. We do have a, also a Venetian merchant. Also, you know, I know that there's no city states in this game, so it's going to make things tough for Venice and Greece. But, I mean, it's that's not what this game is about. This game is about colonization, okay? This, 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 we're not, we're not, I, again, you know, city states are fun, but... City-states really stop the AI from going to war. If there's a line of city-states, then there is ultimately going to be a, a, a lot less war going on. Constantinople seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, in terms of population, how is most of the world doing? We have, looks like, I looks like London. I know India's got to be good. Yeah, India's got seven pop. Uh, we have Mecca at seven as well, Thebes as well. Ethiopia down to three cities, the Zulu up to three cities as well. No, four cities. Okay, there we go. Good for the Zulu. These African civs are expanding fast. Boom! Askia might have the biggest, uh, the biggest city in the world, I think. It looks like it, more than likely. I don't think there's going to be very many at 10 population. Yeah, they've got to be. Yep. All right. But you know what? Siam probably has the most because they've got two six-population cities. Jakarta's at six as well. Wow, that's surprising. Songhai's pretty big. I mean, there's a lot of farmland, a lot of fertile land here. They do have wheat as well. Oh, they're also going to have access to iron. Pretty good start. This is a pretty good start for Songhai. I never even realized that. Holy shit. The Frith uh, Carthage city is about to get slapped down. Austria's got up the stu uh, this, the stu uh, I'm sorry, the Stonehenge. So I think one thing to, to take note of is that Science Victory isn't ultimately going to be the, uh, the, the victory choice, I think, here. I don't think it's going to be for sure a Science Victory. I think, I, I think it's very easily safe to say we could see a cultural victory only because there's going to be a lot of war. And I'm thinking that there could be uh, a, a, few, a few wars kind of slowing down the possibility of a science victory. We cer certainly saw that in the last video. Again, uh, just to repeat, I know a lot of you guys are used to the AI-only battle domination games. The way I set this up and the way we run these campaigns is that it would take us, I, I'm not even kidding, uh, like my projection, I think, is like nearly over 100 videos in one campaign. First wars broken out, of course it's in Iberia versus Portugal and Spain. Perfect timing. But again, it's. do you realize how, how, how much that would take? Imagine for someone like England to get a domination victory. They would have to eventually expand over towards Japan. I'm, I would guess, honestly, we'd be up to 200 to even 300 videos. Yeah. I, I, I'm not Northern Lion playing Binding of Isaacs. No way. I'd love to be that. But I, I just certainly can't. That's just not healthy. Uh, that's not healthy for, for my channel to play 200 videos in the same series because it tends to, it, that would be way too boring. And uh, the, 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 the rate at which we're doing videos per series right now is actually working pretty nicely. So uh, anyways, guys, I'm going to have to stop right there. We've got our first war broken out. I have to guess, again, I think if either the Zulu or Science Victory or India with the Cultural Victory.
Anyways, we're going to see who wins in Iberia. It looks like it's going to be Spain because Portugal is not doing so good. This will be a really, really good uh, part for Spain if they are able to do this. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.